Judges 16, chapter 4, and if you're willing and able, would like to stand to honor the reading of God's word, I invite you to do so. And the Bible says, talking about Samson, after this, he loved the woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistine came up to her and said to her, seduce him and see where his great strength lies and by what means we may overpower him that we may bind him to humble him. And we will each give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies and how you might be bound that one could subdue you. Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she bound them him with them. Now she had men lying in ambush in an inner chamber, and she said to them, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he snapped the bowstrings as a thread of flax snaps when it touches the fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, Behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Please tell me how you might be bound. And this went on several times as Samson would tell her one outrageous thing and she would try it and he would say, Oh, no, I'm, I'm free, I'm strong. And the Philistines wouldn't be able to get him. And now we skip down to verse 15 and we pick up there and it says, And she said to him, How can you say, I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and you have not told me where your great strength lies. And when she pressed him hard with her words day after day and urged him, his soul was vexed to death. And he told her all his heart and said to her, A razor has never come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If my head is shaved, then my strength will leave me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up again, for he has told me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hands. She made him sleep on her knees and she called the man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. And the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze shackles and he ground at the mill in the prison. But the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. So here we have the story of the strongest man in the Bible. And the first thing I want to start off today is that we need to be strong. There is a need for strength. We need to be strong. Israel needed to be strong. And if you read the story of Samson, which I invite you to do from Judges 13 all the way through Judges 16, you'll see the tragic story of what happens when our strength fails. Now, Samson was one of the judges of Israel, and you may remember the pattern that took place in the book of Judges where the Israelites would sin against God, and then God would allow their enemies to come and to torment them, and the Philistines were some of the worst enemies that Israel ever had. They built garrisons in their land, and they stole uh, their, their produce from them, made their life miserable. So the Israelites would cry out to God, and God would raise up a judge and give them strength 
And Samson was one of these judges. We need to be strong. For 40 long years, Israel had endured the terrorizing of the Philistines. And I think for us in this story, as we look at what happened to God's people Israel, we can see that today we fight a spiritual battle and we need strength. We don't have Philistines terrorizing us. We have the devil terrorizing us who goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if we're not strong, we're going to fall into his grasp. We had better be strong, church. Look at what is going on in this world. Look at the drugs. Look at all the sin that just flies out from your television screen. Look at the way our society is crumbling. Look at what we find in our schools. Look at what is going on in our churches. And conversely, what is not going on with many pews being empty. We need strength. And in this time, if you look back in Judges 13, you'll see that there was a, a, a man and woman. His name was Manoah. He was from the tribe of Dan. He was a Danite. And in this time of weakness, she was barren. She could not have children. And you may remember the story how an angel of the Lord visited her. That doesn't happen often in the, how many, in the Bible. How many times can you remember in the Bible where an angel of the Lord came and announced a special birth? But Samson, remember John the Baptist? Remember Jesus, right? So here was God saying, I'm going to give you strength. And Manoah's wife, even though you cannot have children, I'm going to enable you to do so. We need strength. Because weakness is everywhere. We need to be strong. So then let's see if this morning we can interview Samson for a little while. If we can ask him, okay, Samson, we see that God indeed has blessed you. And you may remember Samson did so many great feats. Uh, one time he pulled up the gates and the bars of, a, of a, a city gate. Of course, the time he slew all the Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. He did all these wonderful feats. And, you know, uh, some Bible scholars believe that the, the legend of Hercules may actually refer back to the uh, doings of Samson inspired that. So, okay, Samson, what is the secret of your strength? We want to know. But that is a dangerous question. Because you'd better get it right. You'd better understand it. Not only because, you know, we want to know to be strong. I remember when I was a kid reading the comic book. Some of you may remember that. But do you remember those Charles Atlas ads that were in the back of the comic book? Remember those? Poor wimpy guys at the beach with his girlfriend <laughs> and some big strong dude just kicking sand in his face. He says, I'm going to get you. And he, he wimps out and his girlfriend says, you loser. So he goes home. He says, oh, wow. I see where I can get this information, free information from Mr. Atlas and I'll be a strong man. And he does. And he's the big hero. So we want to know so we can be strong, right? But I'm telling you that the Philistines also want to know. Because Samson was wreaking havoc. They couldn't stop him. Nothing, they, they just could not bind him. He was, he was literally supernaturally strong. What is the secret of our strength? We need to know. But we, you know, the enemy wants to know too. Because the enemy wants to do what will make you weak. And that's where Satan is coming at you. To make you weak. Because what good does it do to be strong if you allow yourself 
to be taken. The secret of our strength. Okay, Samson, what is it? And we can look at Delilah. I get kind of tickled when people think Samson and Delilah is a love story. That's not a love story. You do not want that kind of relationship. Not only does she betray him, but there's a lot of nagging involved. Nobody wants that. Oh, Samson, won't you tell me? Come on, won't you tell me? But Samson gives us an important example. Well, what is the, what is the secret of our strength? Well, we can, we can find some things it's not. A lot of things it's not. And when people say, well, Christians, what's the secret of your strength? And some people will, will say, a Christ, uh, suppose a Christian might say, well, my parents were godly. That that is important. And it is a great benefit when we raise our children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Too bad it didn't rub off on Samson. He was rebellious. His parents, you know, God told Manoah's wife, she said, now Samson is going to be a Nazarite. And you can look in Leviticus and find out what the Nazarites, what their particular vow was, but basically it meant they were devoted themselves to the Lord as a sign of that devotion. They did not touch any sort of alcoholic drink, not even grapes. They couldn't even eat raisin bran. Okay, that's a bad. That's how dedicated they were. And the hair was allowed to, to grow out because eventually they would shave it off. It would be offered to God, right? So, the secret of our strength must be our parents. And they do provide us a leg up, but that's not it. Because we find that Samson's parents did all that they could do. And there was a, an occasion where he wanted to actually marry this Philistine girl. And they said, now, son, you're a judge of Israel. You need to find a nice young lady from one of the tribes. He said, no, I like this one. And I'm telling you, it is a fact that people do not take advice when it comes to affairs of the heart. They will not listen to you. They do not listen. I don't know why lovelorn people ask for advice. Well, should I ditch him? He's cheated on me 26 times, but he, he promised this time he's going to be good. No, 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 stop. I'm not going to do it anyway. But it's not the, if it's not the parents, Samson, what is the secret of your strength? And everybody says, it's the hair. Jay, does your beard make you strong? No. <laughs> right? Well, you know, people say, well, you know, Samson lost his strength when he lost his hair, right? So it must be his hair. Y'all remember this young man who was the uh, a prince of King David whose name was Absalom? Remember him? Rebelled against his father. He had, he had, uh, I mean, he, if people were selling shampoo, he could have made a fortune on endorsements, right? He had this beautiful, long, flowing hair. He used to weigh it every year, and it was some uncommonly large number. You could shave off every hair I've had since I turned 50, and you wouldn't get that much. But Samson needed not any Rogaine. But yet... When he lost his hair, he lost his strength. So how can you tell me it's not the hair? Well, let's look a little closer at the situation. Because in order to understand the secret of our strength, we had better understand the reason for our weakness. Why was Israel weak? 
Well, militarily, they just didn't have the ability to stand against the Philistines. Now, the Philistines were this tribe of warlike people. They colonized a few cities, five or six cities, there on the coast of the Mediterranean. Their big secret was they had access to iron. So they had iron chariots. And in the military of the day, it was like those H. Mars uh, artillery that we shipped over to the Ukraine. It gave them an edge. And during the time of David, we look some years after this, or King Saul, in the King Saul time, the Philistines were at it again. They didn't even allow Israel to have any blacksmiths. If you wanted to sharpen your hoe or your axe, you had to take it down to a Philistine village and they charge you an arm and leg to sharpen it for you because they didn't want any of the Israelites knowing how to work with iron because that gave them strength. And you see what the devil does to us is he wants to take away what really gives us strength and for bald guys like me, it's a relief because it's not your hair. So what is it? Well, we look on a little farther. Maybe we'll say the secret of our strength, what makes us strong is our religion. Yeah. Religion ought to do it. Let's all be religious. Now, I think in our worship, we do find the secret of strength, but it's not just mere religion, and it's not just serving God on paper, if you will. Because outwardly, Samson was super religious. He was a Nazarite from birth. He had never cut his hair. And that everybody could look at Samson and say, oh, why Samson? Look how long your hair is. You must be a Nazarite. And he was. But we begin to see this alarming pattern develop in Samson's life where he had the external forms of religion, but his life was a mess. He was willful. He had a thing for the ladies. Oh, he was weak, 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 weak when it came to women. So religion wasn't making him strong. The religion was just an outward symbol. Do we rely on our religion to make us strong? Do we rely on the fact that, hey, preacher, I turn up for church every Sunday. You might even catch me on Wednesday every now and then. But that's not the real secret of our strength. Well, let's look at some of Samson's great deeds that he did. What did he do? Well, in one place in Judges 14 and 6, he grabbed the lion and actually ripped it apart with his bare hands. Wow, what a guy. I'd like to do Satan like that, wouldn't you? Right, roar in the lion, I'll show you. He ripped him apart. And it says, listen, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Why? It was the Spirit of God that gave Samson his strength. He killed 30 Philistines in Ashkelon. That's one of their Philistine cities. And he gave their fancy clothes to his wedding companions. This is one of his first great deeds in chapter 14, verse 19, because it says, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And Chapter 15 and verse 15, one of Samson's greatest deeds, he killed a thousand with a donkey's jawbone. It says the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. His last great act that he did was after he had been turned into basically a draft animal by the Philistines, they had put out his eyes, they had hitched him to a 
a thing to grind the grain. It was just like an ox, just like a donkey. And Satan will humiliate you, and Satan will blind you, and Satan will make you weak and make you into a Samson, but his hair has grown back, but that wasn't what made him strong again. It was he cried to the Lord and brought down the evil house of Dagon in chapter 16 and verse 28 because it said he called upon the Lord. That's what made him strong. And what made him weak? If calling upon the Lord makes you strong, then wandering away from God will make you weak. And what is true for Samson is true for me and you. Wandering from God will make you weak. And as Samson fell prey to Delilah's charm, Oh, Samson, tell me what the what what makes you what would make you weak? And he told one thing, but gradually he began to give the secret away. He got a little closer and a little closer. I'm not I'm big and strong. Nothing's going to happen to me. So he was kind of like I remember I went to a state park one time when we were on a school trip. And there was an alligator out doing what alligators do, bobbing along. And there was this bird, one of those pond birds. And it was just walking all around him. Just, and you would think, now why would that stupid bird get so close? But he kept just out of reach. He got away with it, but I was watching a nature show. Exact thing happened. This this happy-go-lucky little bird was just swimming along. Ha, ha, you can't get me. And that alligator made a mighty leap. Rawr, and had him some chicken for dinner. So yeah, you can be like Samson. You can tempt fate. You can get closer to sin, thinking that you can be immune to the effects and get closer and get closer. And finally, we see Samson with his head in Delilah's lap. And it says he told, them all, he told her all his heart. Proverbs 4 and 23 gives us the warning. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. This is why you keep your heart, church. But yet Samson, for all of his strength, for all of his might, for all of his ability to be a warrior, allowed himself to fall into temptation bit by bit and more and more. Until at last, tragically, as he was lulled to sleep, one more time, Delilah snipped off the seven locks of his hair, and she said, the Philistines are on you, Samson. The Philistines are on you. And he got it up, and he said, I'll just go out like I've done before. And the most tragic verse in Samson's story is verse 20, and it says, he did not know that the Spirit of God had departed from him. He just didn't know. Do you mean to tell me that God can leave your life and you won't even know it? How desensitized to God do you have to be before you can step so far out of the circle of God's love and protection and light and not even realize that you're in the darkness until it's too late. So Samson, what's the secret of your strength? I'll tell you what the secret of our strength is, church. The secret of our strength is to deny our own puny and selfish strength and to rely completely and totally upon God. That's how you be strong. Paul discovered this, that famous passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. 
Remember the Apostle Paul had what he called a thorn in the flesh, a tormentor from the devil. Something was bothering him. Some Bible commentators think maybe he had an eye disease. Whatever it was, it was really hindering him. It was making him weak. And he cried to God three times, God, take this thorn out of my side so I can serve you better. I'm too weak to serve you. And God said to him, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And Paul goes on to say, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. It's pretty amazing. You mean in order to be strong, all I've got to do is say, Lord, I cannot do this on my own. And church, it doesn't matter if you do have Samson's strength. It doesn't matter if you can catch 300 foxes and tie their tails together and light them a fire and send them into the Philistines' grain. It, don't, it doesn't matter if you can pull up the gates of the city. It doesn't matter how accomplished you might be, how talented you are, how well connected, how much money you have. It doesn't matter how strong you think you are. You are nothing without God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Do you ever wonder what that means? Why should we be happy to be poor? Because when we're poor, we realize and understand that we need God. And Samson came to that realization a few Philistines too late. He rediscovered it as he ground the grain, as the Philistines mocked him as they claimed that their God was stronger than his God, and he began to understand that the weakness wasn't God, it was him. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. And that's why the scripture says, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. The secret of our strength this morning is to know Jesus. Are you tired of the devil kicking sand in your face? Are you upset with how weak you feel? Do you wish you could just be stronger than your temptations? Do you long for strength to get from day to day? Church, I'm here to tell you the source of strength is available to you. And as Paul discovered through his thorn in the flesh, he'd rather be weak with God's strength than strong all by himself. And he, he says finally in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You may be going through things this morning that are humanly impossible. I can tell you for a fact, if you're trying to find your way to heaven on your own good works and your own strength and, and being good and following rules, you're not going to get anywhere. This altar is open as we have our time of invitation this morning. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be strong. Yes, be strong. And you don't have to order something out of a comic book. And you don't have to rely on any gimmick this morning. But all it takes, all it takes to have strength is to trust in the Lord. As our musicians come forward, we're going to have a time of invitation. If you feel the Lord is speaking to your heart today, if you feel maybe it has been too long being weak and you want some of the strength of the Lord, I invite you to turn your life over to Jesus.
this very day. You may already be a Christian and you may have been getting a little too close to the alligator. You need to ask God to give you some common sense to trust in Him. Well, the Lord always wants to make us strong. He's willing to save us and redeem us. Let's all stand as we sing.